Hi, Keith back again. I uh, have another set of mouthpieces, Barry Sachs mouthpieces I'm just going to run through. This group of mouthpieces um, was sent to me by my friend Paul, so these, this uh, bunch of pieces all actually belong to him. I figured I'd go through the whole bunch of them in one shot, talk a little bit about each one after I get through blowing it. Um, like the last time, no particular agenda, just figured I'd do a quick video, play each one in relatively quick succession and let you guys decide what you like. So, here's the first one. So this mouthpiece <clears throat> is actually made by Arnold Montgomery, a small one-man shop, and uh, it's kind of neat. It's I don't know if he still makes them like this, but it's very, very colorful. It looks like something you might get uh, from the Disney World gift shop if you were to stop there. Uh, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's all sparkly. It, it has like metallic flakes in it, so very nice. This is the Anka, and it's a... Um, it's a little bit darker than I was expecting. It would be a really good mouthpiece for someone looking to um, maybe play in a pit or in a big band or jazz combo. It doesn't have quite the kind of bite you'd like to have if you wanted to play with a rock or a funk band or something like that. But for a lot of other types of music, that would be really nice. A little bit of an unusual mouthpiece, um, something you don't see out there. But I'm not sure if he still makes them in the, uh, the wild color combinations anymore. This piece is a um, a metal berg, a stainless steel berg. It's a relatively small tip opening, at least for me. It's a 105, and so. It feels a little bit restricted. Um, I have a probably a little bit harder read on here as well, but it's got a lot of those kind of uh, typical bird uh, bird characteristics that a lot of berry players like. Um, even though it uh, it's not a large tip, you still get a little bit of brightness and a little bit of bite with this mouthpiece. And I'm going to be playing a couple others that are are bergs and. Um, inspired by Bergs, and you'll kind of get the gist of that, the idea that a lot of these have sort of a similar characteristic to them. Um, nice, I think I would take this or like this in a little bit larger tip opening um, if I was going to get something like that, but you may find that um, for something like uh, someone who doubles on alto or mostly plays alto or something and plays berry in like a, um, you know, a, a pep band or something like that, that might be a good choice uh, mouthpiece for that kind of playing. This is another Berg, but much, much different than the previous one. This is a hard rubber Berg that uh, is actually uh, started out as a 110 over 1, I believe, and was refaced by uh, Mojo Berry, or Keith Bradbury in New Jersey. And this is just a beautiful playing mouthpiece. It's got a big, lush sound with a little bit of uh, pop to it and a little bit of sparkle. Um, one of the best all-around mouthpieces I've ever played. This is uh, the type of thing you probably <laughs> you could expect to get if you send a uh, mouthpiece uh, to a you know a really first-class refacer. You do a really nice job on it, and it gives you uh, those kinds of characteristics. It just it just blows really really nice. Um, not as bright and edgy as some of the other Bergs, but just a really big lush sound that would be at home in many many different 
types of environments and types of genres. So um, not easy, not something you're going to buy off the off the shelf or you're going to order from your local online retailer, but uh, very nice mouthpiece nonetheless. So if you're thinking you like that Berg sound, but you've got one that you want modified a little bit, you might think about uh, sending that to a, a reface or somebody like Mojo to have that have that work done. This is another one of those, uh, actually a, a, a Berg copy. This one is made by um, Retro Revival mouthpieces. It's called the Los Angeles. And this was supposed to be the, you know, the kind of super Berg. It was the, the, the best Berg that one of the guys there in the shop had ever played. It's a 110 over 2, which is a little smaller in facing than the one I just previously played. This mouthpiece, though, is much, much brighter than the other Bergs, and I, um, I mean, this is something you might like if you're playing a lot of rock music or in a funk band or something like that, but it's a little more one-dimensional than the other ones. It's just a little bit bright for my taste, but if you're playing in a band that you need to be able to really cut through a little bit, you're playing with a lot of amplified instruments or something, this might be something you'd consider um, but it's going to be a little more difficult uh, for trying to blend into sections and whatnot. So playing it in like a big band or a jazz combo or something of that's, that ilk probably is not going to be the, uh, the best use of a piece like this. Similar in nature to the Berg I just played, but I feel with a little more body, uh, is this Aaron Drake. This is a one of the contemporary crossover models. I have two of these in my own uh, collection of mouthpieces, and I play the ones I have frequently on this, on this horn because I feel like they tune very well um, with the sort of longer but a little bit smaller chamber. It just seems to work well intonation-wise with this particular, uh, particular horn. Um, again, a little bit bright, um, but probably a good all-around mouthpiece if you can tame it down just a little bit. Um, I, like I said, I like it on, uh, on this horn for a lot of the type of playing that I do, um, but uh, it may be a little bit bright for some of you out there, much like the previous Berg I just played, but ni very nicely made, beautiful facings and machine work um, on the, mouth, the mouthpiece there by, uh, by Aaron. This um this is a mouthpiece much like one of the ones that I played on the first recording that I made, the first video I made. It's a Autolink Super Tone Master Metal One. And this uh, also has a very small wedge baffle put in, a little bit smaller than the one that was in the mouthpiece that I played in the first video. Um, it plays very, very similar to that. I really like this. Um, this combination seems to work very well for me. Somebody, some uh, of the folks, including Paul, find this combination to be a little bit bright. But I find that it, it uh, one of these links with a little bit of baffle added is really really nice and can work uh, can work really well. You can spend a lot more money on fancier boutique style mouthpieces and not get a piece that uh, that sounds as good as this. Again, one of those things very very flexible. 
I find that the bottom end with these links just has a really nice full sound uh, that I really enjoy and can be, uh, again, played in a lot of different genres. You can even play that in a rock or a funk setting um, if you're playing on a mic. It might not cut as well. It doesn't have quite the brightness of some of the others. But if, you're, uh, if your sound guy is up to snuff, that would be fine for that kind of environment as well. Another uh, piece that has a fair amount of baffle in it, this is a Van Doren V5 in a B95 facing. And in the, uh, the original video that I did, I played the cousin to this mouthpiece, the V16, in about the same tip opening. And they have uh, a lot of similar characteristics. You may have seen the YouTube video where uh, Dennis de Blasio actually plays both of these mouthpieces back to back, the, v, the V5 and the V16. And he sounds almost identical on both of them. Of course, he's a much, much better player than I am. Um, so don't take my word for it. Take his word for it if you're going to look into that. But um, bright, a little bit cutting, um, very nicely made. Nice Again, nice machine work by Van Doren. In terms of production, uh, you know, production mouthpieces, uh, large quantities made by these bigger companies, these are very, very nice. Of course, you got a good selection of ligatures that Van Doren also makes to go along with these. Um, I like the V16 a little bit better myself. I find this to be a little bit brighter, and I kind of like the way the, v, the V16 takes air, um, just the sort of feel of it. It just feels a little bit uh, better to me in terms of the playing characteristics, the resistance and response, and, uh, and that sort of thing. But, um, but otherwise, again, a, a really nice offering from... Um, from Van Doren there, if you're uh, if you're looking for something um, that's relatively easy to get, relatively easy to find in stores. piece is a is a uh, a Meyer that's made by Babbitt. You saw me struggling with it a little bit there. Um, I have a, a, a fiber cell, an older fiber cell reed on this. Um, I think these have a relatively nice sound. There's a lot of guys out there that are using these um, for uh, a lot of different. You know, a lot of doublers use a mouthpiece like this if they're doing pit work. Um, you know, some some jazz band or big band type of stuff. Um, concert band playing, depending on the facing you get. Um, recognize that the Meyer facings are smaller than uh, the Link facings, so this one I think is a 9, which sounds big, but it's not a particularly large tip opening in the Meyer measuring system. This particular mouthpiece, I, I feel probably would, uh, would benefit from a refacing job. I didn't have time to look at these that closely and measure them and really kind of dig into the numbers so much, but the facing length on this piece is a little bit short for what I, I uh, really prefer in a Barry Sachs mouthpiece. I think that's why it's a little bit reed picky for me and I, I had to try a number of different reeds on it. I think uh, if, if I had this mouthpiece and was going to play it regularly, I probably um, touch it up a little bit either myself and, and increase the facing length, even it out a little bit, or I'd send it to somebody and have them do uh, a refacing job on it. It has a nice sound, um, but the, the blowing characteristics are not great uh, in my mind, and I think it's mostly because the, uh, the facing is not, is not really great for uh, Barry on that particular piece. <laughs> This is another one of those uh, mouthpieces that just has a big, um, 
just a wonderful sound down low, uh, relatively lush, a little bit brighter than the Mojo Berg that I played uh, a little while ago. But this is the um, the Haas by Sax Quest, and this is in a I believe it's a 120 tip opening. Um, really like this. I think uh, the, with the size of this mouthpiece, I know it's hard to see on the camera in terms of the relative sizes, but a uh, pretty big um, mouthpiece in terms of length probably would tune well okay or tune okay on older uh, vintage horns. Some of these pieces are not going to be great for vintage horns. Um, you're going to have problems with them playing very sharp. I'm not pushing them. Uh, some of them, the, the uh, shanks are very small, so I'm not forcing them onto my horn here. So I'm actually playing a little bit flat for those of you uh, scoring at home. But um, I like this nice mouthpiece, um, something a little bit different from the folks at South uh, at Sax Quest. And um, yeah, you contact them if you're if you're interested in this. But really, uh, really like that one as well for again for kind of all around uh, playing. Might not be the best um, choice if you're looking for something particular to a rock or a funk band, R and B type setting. But for other types of playing. Um, Really nice, probably a really nice choice, really nice option. This one with a uh, an older um, fiber cell reed as well, but uh, again similar in vein to some of the others I played. Very nice all around, very nice sound. I think um, I prefer a few of the other pieces in terms of the overall kind of blowing characteristics. But I think I could get used to playing this uh, in a lot of different settings. It's got a kind of an interesting um, shaped baffle in it, and. Uh, again, very, very, uh, very nicely made. Very similar to an older, an older link, uh, you know, a, like a slant type of design. And so, um, this is something else that you could use in a lot of different settings. Again, doesn't have quite the, the bite and the brightness of some of the other things I played. So it's not going to be the, your best choice for playing in a funk band or a rock band or something like that. But otherwise. Um, really nice characteristics, um, you know, really nice playing mouthpiece. This is, uh, if you remember the first video I did, I played a, a different model PPT. This is a, a mouthpiece that's made in collaboration with uh, Pete Thomas and Ed Pillinger um, over in uh, the UK. This is their kind of slant model. The one that I own is the, I think called the power model or it was called something like that. This, uh, this is a little more reserved, a little bit better for kind of all around playing. I really like the way this mouthpiece responds. I, I like the way this, um, I really like the way this plays. Um, it's got a little bit of edge to it. If you push it, it gets a bit brighter, which is nice. Um, so if you're, if you're playing in a, uh, you know, in an environment where occasionally you need to, uh, to stand out a little bit or to solo a bit or something like that, this is a really nice, um, mouthpiece for, uh, you know, for that kind of thing. I just, uh, it's, it's beautifully made and I really like it. If I have a criticism of this one, Pete, Ed, the taper on this mouthpiece is such that uh, finding a ligature for it, this happens to be, I actually bought this ligature just to put on this piece for this video. 
Um, this is a, a Francois Louis pure brass uh, ligature. Finding a ligature that fits to fit this mouthpiece is like a real scavenger hunt. Um, you guys really need to to change the, uh, the the you know the outer sort of shape of this piece so that getting a ligature to fit right on it isn't so so difficult. They think you might find that people would warm up to this a little bit more. But anyway, really like that one. If you can find a ligature for it that uh, that works for you, that's a great sounding mouthpiece. Can be played in a lot of different genres. So so there you have it. That's um, the 11 mouthpieces that my friend Paul sent, some of them you can get, uh, you know, straight away off the shelf. Others, um, not so easy to get. Some of them uh, refaced, you know, you'd have to send them out if you want something like that and know what you're looking for. But I hope you enjoyed that. I have another video I'm going to do uh, in not too long and post that on my own uh, set of mouthpieces. I have about another uh, 10 or 11 uh, that I've accumulated over the last four or five years in sort of my collection. And I'm going to do another video and play, uh, play those as well. So you'll get to hear those too. Um, but next time.